Aspetta. Sì. Ci siamo dimenticati di fare il video per YouTube. Ma tu non devi uscire alle 5? Eh, dobbiamo farlo. Sì. Ok. No, perché ho appena stampato uno qua. Cos'è? Possiamo già partire? No? Sì, sì, quando vuoi. Ok. Sempre pronto. Uh, scrivo dopo. Ok. Hello, hello, back again. Today we make a nice video. I just printed out the email from, should have asked Min how I pronounce this. It's, uh, he's from South Korea. My name is Su Hyo Nam. Okay, I hope I pronounced it very well. And he's from South Korea, uh, Korea learning how to play the violin. I have a lot of questions about the violin, as I understand if you start playing. As I'm a player, could I ask you a question about care and maintenance of the violin? And this is actually a boring question. But there comes, there's a lot of information on the internet, but I'd like to know what you think about it. And then it's like a firework in my head because actually it's true. This is actually a very interesting question because I have a few things which I would like to show you. Main problem actually with all these nice maintenance and care video on the internet and even if it comes to bicycles or motorcycles, cars and dogs, cats and everything, people make nice videos because they want to sell something. Now, it's not a secret that I'm a violin maker and I make my living of constructing violins and making them and I've never really had a bow in my life by the way so I give great advice but I'm not a bow maker but if you would jump in here then I certainly would take care of your bow bring it to the bow maker here next door I just want to give you a quick overview what actually is the most important thing I should have sit down a little bit more close and write everything in detail and then I can sort out my thoughts and everything but actually I dedicated already 40 years here to know what I have to tell you. So let's say, when I bought a bicycle, even if it was not expensive, the thing I immediately bought was the lock to lock the bicycle. And with the, with the violin, a cello, a viola, a double bass, it's always the same. It's not the lock, but it's where you store the violin. And that's the case. Now, if you have now a very lousy, cheap instrument, you might end up in a lousy violin case, okay? And that's okay, it's okay. You know, how much will this cost? In production, 250. And in, uh, in sale, made in China, tag on here, it costs maybe 50. You can imagine how much profit in between become before it comes into your hands. Uh, usually they're made very well and uh, inside especially they look very fancy and then they sell them for how nice and long. Now this one is not nice. Anyhow, it's just, it's not the case itself, but it's, it's around. So first thing, the handle. This handle here has already some repair of the handle and if you look at it, I wouldn't trust to put in my violin and then walk around and I'll strong it and it falls down and first problem, your violin is falling down. Violin is super delicate because how it is made, in case there comes a shock, it's like imploding, okay? Imploding is the opposite of exploding, okay? So it's... This one, and then you don't hear anything. That was your violin, your sound box, which went through the top and, and, and. So, a case with straps, which are broken like this. I have to show you this one, because this is a typical, you know? This is already broken. Then they put it around the other one. So all the trust goes on the second one. I wouldn't trust on this one. And here, this one here, usually this one is opening up and then it jumps out. And when you put it on your shoulder and you go with your bicycle, skateboard, roller skates, I don't know what with the violin on your back, this one isn't secure. So 
If you buy even a lousy instrument, first rule, take a better case, take a very good case. And in order to show you what is a good case, certainly you always want the, the lightest one, right? But light means also that it's not strong. The strong part needs to be on the upper part because the flat part is usually easy to make that it is robust and strong. The upper part here is a bridge and when it is out of, I don't know, foam, this is very thin. So when it gets a hip here, a touch, it goes straight to the bridge, which will destroy again your top of your violin. Well, your violin didn't cost a lot, so if you don't care, okay, then buy it, make a concert and then throw it away. I doubt you can make a concert with that one. Next step of a case, people think that when the case is rectangular, it is much better, right? Even Christian said, wow, this one is the most expensive one because it's so golden, right? As you know, Chinese love gold, just like me. So, gold, precious stones, I love all of this kind of stuff. And it looks super nice, but again, the cover here is very thin. And if you would put a finger from this side and this side, and you realize that it is very soft here, then actually the instrument is protected because you put in here your, your books and all the cheap music you need. And this is actually then taking care of your instrument. Now, certainly a case is always in a certain relation to the value of your instrument, but still, as cheaper the instrument is, the higher is the relation that's rather one-to-one -one the value of the case and the value of your instrument. So I would rather invest in a better case immediately from the beginning when you start playing and then in case something is broken you can repair it. The instrument inside is safe and then when you change the instrument you don't have to buy a new case. That's why if I buy a case I buy a case made here. This one is, by the way, an old one. It has probably 20 years at least. And that's a case from Maurizio Riboni. But it could be also now a case from Dimitri Musafia, from Geva, from uh, what else do we have? The BAM cases. All this kind of thing is all great, okay? It's not that I have something against Chinese cases, it's just they only work on a very low price, which is okay. But if you can afford 100 euro for a violin, you can also afford 250 for a better case. Okay? That's what I think. If you cannot, okay, then just know you cannot rely on your handle and you cannot rely on your straps, which from Chinese to this one, there's a huge difference. This one here, only the strap probably costs 30, 40 euro. And it's a completely different way of case, okay? That's first thing of maintenance and care when it comes to an instrument. And this is for trombones, bicycles, and everything you own, okay? This is just a life advice from Edgar for free. And another thing which I think is also important beside all these uh, details from the instrument and the case is the bow. I'm not a bow maker as I told you in the beginning of the video, but the bow is something very sophisticated, has hundreds of years of history and it finally came to this great situation that it has a super nice curve a high sophisticated wood and shape and performs very well. Now you would just say everybody talks about the instrument and they only focus on the instrument, but the bow, every bow has a different characteristics and properties and every instrument actually deserves a different bow. But usually violin makers never talk about it and I shouldn't say anything because I'm not a bow maker so I can't make money out of it. But one thing is what I see very often, that musicians, when they turn the screw to have some tension here, they turn it too much. And they turn it so much that it is actually straight. And then they believe they need all this space because they need to push that much. But that's wrong. That's wrong. You need a little bit, you need to have it here more narrow and more narrow here. So 
leave it a little bit from its original shape and then the bow can vibrate a little bit better okay this is just a trick beside of maintenance and and care the main care on the bow is actually on the screw and the frog how you call it that it doesn't really turn well and doesn't slip very well so if it's stuck and it's tick tick and stuff like this this is already wah, wah, wah. you should go to a valve maker and you should get it fixed a little bit because something is not working properly and the next thing is that here there are 120 hairs of a nice mongolian hair and a horse and you should not touch it like I'm touching it here because no grease should be on, only the rosin in order that it attaches very well to the strings. But let's say like a week ago we saw that video of the nice guy who came for his instrument. Half of the hair was gone. It was just like with our teeth. Yeah? It was just horrible. You cannot play. It doesn't work. Professional musicians, they get new hair every two, three weeks, okay, more or less. So now you're lucky, you save a lot of, 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 of money, uh, you can play even more than a year with it, but then when it's getting dirty like this one here, get it, get it changed, this one here, so you know, it's, I, should, I should be ashamed that it's, I have a bow like this here, so dirty. And usually you don't wash the hair of the bow, like your own hair, okay? just about the bear, okay? I should make a life coach video. I don't know. How much time? Another half an hour. This becomes a long video, Christian. Um, no, next thing I would just say, I could now give you great products. I sell also the, the polish for the instrument and I have chosen it with my best knowledge because I just think this is really good stuff. But you can also use a polish for precious furniture. And if it's for precious furniture, believe me, your instrument probably will also appreciate this TLC which you give once in a month. Don't exaggerate, okay? Don't do it every day. And this is actually the advice. Treat your instrument with a polish, take your time, sit down, look at your instrument if everything is okay and pass over with a nice soft rag. Here I have one here because actually then I want you to put, take off the dust but there's too much dust on the instruments here so I don't want to make here. As I made a video about the microfiber cloth, micro cloth microfiber cloth is not microfiber cloth yeah and these ones the best come from korea by the way they make them even for the best lenses for photography and they're really a very nice fabric and they have the ability to take micro dust and and there is nothing anymore and this is just what you need and once you finished it Put them immediately to wash and don't leave them in your case as most musicians do and then they take up and take up and take up. It's like washing your car with a sponge which you first wash the road and then you scratch over the door or the, your, the hood of your car. You wouldn't do that. Same thing with the instrument. You don't want to take dust today and then scratch it tomorrow with a polish or something, okay? So if you use it, use it and then wash it okay this is just a small advice which i think is very precious same thing always this one here you don't use this one which you put into the laundry when it is fresh and clean you use that rag again and you can reuse it hundreds of times and then you can clean for instance the strings instead of changing every week or every month the strings if you're a beginner is no use no way to do that except the ones who tell you they have to change the strings every month but this is only for professionals but not for amateur players then you can clean your strings with a string cleaner now i prepared a string cleaner i would love to send them to all of you worldwide become the biggest string cleaner exporter in the world it would be my dream but there is just between me and you this problem that I cannot ship it worldwide everywhere because some countries, they don't want me. India, for instance, no, no way. And recently, also America, they make a little bit of problems. So 
try, you can find it in my online shop. But otherwise, if you don't buy it there, just take another kind of solvent, take a little bit and just clean the area where the bow touches the string, okay? You take out this old rosin and the bow again is better <laughs> attaching to the string and that's the maintenance which you could actually feel if somebody first passes over his face and then on your strings you could not play anymore very well so that's why I suggest to clean the strings best thing is you clean it every time you play it and afterwards you pass with the microfiber and then put it into the laundry about the polish I choose it I explained you already but don't exaggerate don't exaggerate. It's nice that people nowadays are changing their under trousers at least once a day, but still not, all, not everywhere worldwide. And it's great that you want to clean your instrument every day, but it's actually the varnish of the instrument is not made to be stressed like this every day. So cool down. If it, it depends also how much you're you're, you're sweating on your hands or not, it depends, it's very individual, so it's, it's always difficult to say you have to clean this often and you have to clean the strings, like it depends on your fingers, but certainly. If it's only once a month, I would say this would be not bad, because if we would calculate now an old Stradivari from, let's say, 1700, all the way up to now, this is a 300 something years, and then times 365 uh, it's too often if you would clean it every day okay every month and that's fine don't stress your instrument your instrument just pay attention and probably the best advice I can give you is that you treat your instrument as the human being next to you you love the most okay this means if there is something which is not properly working, take it and bring it to the doctor. And for instruments, the doctor is called violin maker. Again, I would love to pay attention to all your problems worldwide, but alone I cannot face it. And I'm glad that there are many violin makers around the world and you have your violin maker and you go there. In case you can't resist that Edgar takes a look, certainly then contact me and I can take a look, okay? But that means that you make a vacation in Italy, a weekend uh, for uh, Easter, for Christmas, for New Year, um, a music festival, a music fair, a show or whatever, and then it's always nice to, to, to have a look at the instrument and we have something to talk about, okay? But generally speaking, usually if there is a problem, Edgar is not next to you immediately, except you have my phone number, then you can WhatsApp me, okay? Great advice. So treat the instrument as like a person you really love very much. Love means to move towards, okay? Hmm? It's a movement. Do the same with your instrument. Hmm? Very well. Um, Another thing which I just think about maintenance, because there is no mechanical object in the world which works forever, okay? This is a fact. So since we have the pegs and we have to tune them and we have to turn them, if you don't turn them, they get stuck. And then you have to pay attention and you have to watch out because if you're just uh, then you break them and this is no good especially the heart shaped ones and you have to take it out push a little bit it's a cone okay it's stuff like this once you get it out and they're stuck then you can put on some I call it peg dope this one here is the original hill, hill composition peg compound this one is the one actually I use the most Okay, maybe I can put a lick underneath so you can click it and buy it from, uh, I don't know, Amazon. I go here into the shop, which we have here, but it's, I think for, for most people here around, it's Amazon is probably the most um, convenient. And then certainly, if you're looking to get the best bargain, you name it and you will be happy so that you can save some cent. 
If there is not a compound like this, just take any compound. This one is a no-name compound, which I just received before Christmas here from Monica, which has a, a, a instrument uh, and violin making um, accessory shop here. Monica and Antonia from Luteria shop, and she gave me that one. Packaging is very cute. I have never opened it. I think they make them as themselves. Yeah. I think it's the same stuff than in the Hill compound. It's an aluminum, maybe less um, comfortable, but you don't need it every day, okay? So you just put it around and about the bag, put back the bag, I will make a video about it, but this is just a small advice. And in case you don't have that because you're in big, then, and you're, let's say, in a hotel and they have these small soaps, I still take them, even so I don't need them anymore. Maybe you, you still remember this. This one is, is well seasoned. All the humidity is gone. And now it's a hard piece of, of soap. Yeah, this typical, yeah, Lux, when I was a kid, Lux was a typical brand for a soap. And I have it like this. And uh, big piece looks like this and soap and chalk are also a great way to adjust the pegs but nowadays you don't use it because the chalk is like actually a little bit like sandpaper uh, abrasive so it's a little bit eating up the pegs and everything but it would be in emergency it would be aversion don't put too much soap otherwise it's slipping and don't too, put too much of this one then it would be stuck. So you have to find a little bit there. It's just a small advice, better than nothing, but the pack compound, the back dope of Hill, I think is the best. It's, it's like a lipstick, you know, you can, uh, yeah. I think it's, packaging is good. It's, it's always soft enough. It's not too hard. It works very well. That's about the pegs. When it comes to the strings, where the strings are, here I take a viola, which is a little bit bigger and easier to see, where the strings are up in the upper nut, take off a string and put some pencil on it. And then the, the graphite of the pencil, just a little bit. Sometimes I see it's all black here. Don't exaggerate, just a little bit. It's just little and it's working. Otherwise the string is like a saw. You remember this, this Boy Scout saws with two rings and then there's a a little bit. This is the, 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 the procedure of a string on upper nut. You don't want that. You want it that it's slipping and sliding smoothly into the back box towards the peg and the peg and then it's turning around. That's what you want. Okay. So just use a little bit your daily well, then I see very often that people put a lot of pencil on the bridge and the bridge is a big mess. Believe me, I think that the strain on this thin part of the bridge does not slip. I, I, I have not seen it. What works very well, and you can see it in several videos of mine, that I put the instrument on my lap and then I put a, a, two fingers underneath and then I lift up the string and I re-put it down. Okay, tack. Tuck, you know, I lift it here. You can, I hope you can see it. I lift it and ah, the winding of the string is grateful that you're ah, treating the string so well. Okay, so you just singly every string, you pull it up and you put it back in place. That's a great thing to treat the string on this area of the bridge. Talking about the bridge, as I showed already in many videos, Take a small piece of card, let's say my business card, and this is my phone number. <sighs> yeah, and this one here, you put like this on the back side, and this is how the bridge should stand. 90 degrees to the top in that area. So it means it seems to be inclined, but it's actually exactly dividing this angle in two equal parts. And that's another advice. If you, every time you tune the instrument from time to time, let's say every day, once in a while, you just take a look, you might see 
professional uh, players with my business cards checking the bridge. So they mean it, it shows us that they know exactly how where to take to where to pay attention on the instrument. And then when they play from one between one solo to another, they look at their instrument and then they read part, right? They always have everything under control. Do it the same way. Regarding maintenance, main part of your problems is probably also caused that the chin rest is touching to the, 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 the tailpiece. The tailpiece should be freely here. This here is now a Vietnam plastic issue that was from a musician who was allergic against the metal screws and the wooden parts, so then they have this one. Now this one is just one out of 100 instruments like this, but at least it's not touching. And this one is free, that's very good. Yeah, there are two, one thing, two more things, two more things. Let's say you decided I hate playing for the next year, years. Then probably the best thing, and that's why I'm talking here in front of those instruments like this, then the best thing to store an instrument would be like this. Not against the wall, you can see they are here free hanging, so air is circulating easily, but that's a best production, um, a protection against parasites who are uh, eating up the wood. If it's closed into a violin case, it's dark and it would be idle uh, condition that the instrument gets eaten up and you don't want that, especially here in Cremona where it's very humid, we have this kind of problem. Maybe in England as well, along the coast in, uh, in, uh, in Australia, I could imagine that they have to face the same problem and in other areas in the world. Probably these insects are worldwide and they exist in every kind of dimension and it's no big fun to have them in your instrument. I can just secure you. And then... Uh, so then they certainly take a lot of dust. Don't have your cleaning woman or anybody or man um, clean them and things like this. Do it yourself and no kids around and stuff like this, yeah? But the best, the very, 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 very best advice for instrument care and maintenance is probably, when you come to my workshop, I give you a card here. This one is a Segurio for European uh, customers and if you um, I will put this link here under the, the video or maybe on the video then you can click on and you can make a instrument insurance you wouldn't believe how many professionals amateurs and very very wealthy people having great collections are saving on this expense just imagine you don't have to pay property um, tax on an instrument and then you're saving on something like this and this is just the wrong spot to save yeah i would just say an insurance is probably the best advice and you you can travel away from your instrument with your instrument or whatever and somebody else can travel with your instrument and it's insured and if something is happening you just face the thing how people treat a car accident you just get out i smashed you i uh, whatever still alive let's get it fixed yeah same with the instrument you know then they come here and we fix the instrument and if it's not me it's another one who knows but this is probably the best advice it's more like for an instrument owner it's a little bit you know, something like you as a, as a uh, YouTube uh, visitor, follower, watcher, who always forgets to subscribe, even if you like it. It's just the same thing, you know? So my best advice at the very end is just smash this bell button and the subscribe button. And we see us next time. Ciao, ciao.